You might have heard me mention the Narcissist PR campaign in other videos. In fact, just recently, I did a video where I showed you real life examples of these narcissistic behaviors where someone is playing the victim and running a PR campaign. If you haven't seen that video, I'm gonna link that up here for you in the corner. In this video, I want to expand on this topic because I wanna help you recognize this very early warning sign of manipulators. They are always working hard on their image. So in this video, I wanna talk about what is the narcissist PR campaign, why they do that, I'm gonna give you some examples of how they might do that. And then at the end, I wanna give you some tips on how to detect the narcissist PR campaign. So what is a PR campaign? PR stands for public relations. It's about managing your image in the public eye it's about managing relationships with the public, and it's about influencing people's opinions and therefore their behavior. So how does this apply to the narcissist? The narcissist is always very concerned with their image. Image is number one. You've heard me mention that in the videos on the narcissistic family, but that is because the narcissist in general is so preoccupied with managing their image and their reputation. Dr. George Simon calls this image management. So why do narcissists do this? And remember, they're doing it from the moment that you meet them. Number one, they wanna look good to you and to others. Number two, that PR campaign serves the narcissist because once they've worked so hard to cultivate this image, that's like they can't possibly be responsible for whatever it is that you're saying that they did. Number three, the PR campaign serves as a prelude to bad behavior because it creates the cognitive dissonance in the mind of the target. Part of you sees this good person and then the other part sees this person who's very manipulative. Number four, that PR campaign serves as a smoke screen for the family, the friends, the neighborhood, the office. That way when you start to talk about who that person is and what they did, no one will believe you. Now the overt PR campaign is gonna be more like the biggest, the best, the strongest. The covert PR campaign is good person, humble person, perfect or humanitarian. So now I wanna give you some examples of the narcissist PR campaign. This person often volunteers or donates either their time or their money to charities. So they're working for free, they're doing this good work, they're helping people in some way. Charities are full of these types. Now, of course, it's not everyone, but they tend to gravitate to charities, especially positions of power in charity organizations and NGOs and anything like that. It makes them look like such a good person. Another example is the philanderer who comes home every day at six o'clock. Such a good person, they come home six o'clock on the dot. But what you don't know is everything they're doing on their lunch hour or they take some break off of work after lunch and they're having affairs or they're hiring people or something like that. Another example is the false humbleness. The person who just goes on and on about what a selfless, helpful person they are. They're such a martyr. They're just, they're just so humble. And this one is so big. I wanna do a future video just on this, on the false humbleness, because it's one of the most common things that you'll see in the covert types especially. Another example how they usually deliver the PR campaign is through histrionic storytelling. This is when they go on and on. And if you see this person in different situations, like maybe you know this person at work, you will see this person, it could be in family, in any group, you'll see this person tell the same story, but it's like this rehearsed story because they're not just telling the same story, they're telling it exactly the same with exactly the same dramatic gestures, exactly the same points of inflection where you're supposed to then give them some kind of <gasps> emotional feedback. You know what I'm talking about? Histrionic storytelling. They'll go on and on and repeat that even when you're like, I know, I know you told me. Yeah, we already heard the story. They will keep 
droning on with this story because that story is simply their public relations campaign. The bottom line is anyone working that hard to sell themselves means something is off. Normal people just don't do that. Now I want to give you six tips to detect the narcissist PR campaign. Number one, look for hypocrisy. That's when words and actions just don't align. They talk a good talk, but when you look at their actions, you see they're doing just the opposite. I worked with this covert narcissist in a retreat center. He would always make fun of the people who came there and talked about ayahuasca told me this, San Pedro told me that. But then he told me that ayahuasca told him that he was going to win the lottery that year and that he was going to give the retreat center to me to run. Number two, look at the big picture patterns. When you're dealing with manipulative people like this, it's very easy to get hung up on the little details, very fixated on one-off situations, and you try to tell other people and they don't really understand, usually because this whole PR campaign is going on in the background. But if you look at the big picture, I did a video years ago on the big picture of narcissistic abuse, and I recommend studying that so you understand the whole picture of how this works, how it's not just love bombing, it's love bombing and devaluation. It's not just they have this good side that they're presenting, it's that they also have this very manipulative conniving side. When you see things as a big picture, you can really get a better view of what the landscape looks like. Number three, don't fall for misdirection. You know, the example of the guy who comes home every day at six o'clock, now that could be a woman too. But let's say the husband who comes home every day at six o'clock and that's his misdirection from all the philandering that he's doing during the workday when you're assuming that he's at work. But in your heart of hearts, you just have that feeling, you know that he's having an affair. You just know it. You even smell it on him, maybe even see lipstick on his clothing or something. And his response is, I come home every day right after work at six o'clock. How could I possibly be having an affair? That's called misdirection. Number four, don't assume that their family and friends won't cover for them because often they will. Often their family and their friends know exactly what they're doing and they don't care. They're gonna defend their friend, they're gonna defend their family member and they're not gonna care about your feelings, your perceptions of reality or what you've actually seen hard evidence for. Number five, watch how they spin it when they get caught. That's where they're gonna do the Darbo thing. They're gonna turn it around on you. They're gonna blame shift to you somehow because of what they did, simply because you caught them. Now that blame shift and the Darbo will usually happen after they first tried to manage their image. Well, when they see that's not working and you're holding them accountable for what you caught them doing, that's when they'll flip everything around at you. Number six, practice growing your bullshit detector. This is the part of you that develops and matures and is able to detect when something feels off, when someone is selling themselves too hard, when they keep telling those same histrionic stories over and over again, when they keep having to tell you about all these good deeds that they do. Listen to that detector because somewhere inside something's gonna go, I just, I don't have a good feeling about this person and maybe you just met them and you get that feeling and you don't have a lot of proof yet, but you can just hear and feel through that PR campaign that it's just a manipulation. Now, in order to grow that bullshit detector, that means you need to be placing your sense of approval inside yourself. You cannot be facing your barometer outside looking for other people to validate your perceptions of reality. If you're in that point, your detector is not working. You are going to defer to the reality of the other person who's going to sound really convincing instead of listening to your intuition and your discernment. So I hope this video was helpful for you to understand more about the narcissist PR campaign. If it was helpful, give it a like or let me know in the comments below. If there's something you want to add to this conversation, something that you noticed in the PR campaign that someone in your life was running, I would love it if you shared that with others in the comments. I'm sending you a big hug.